so good afternoon back again lovely sunny sunny monday and uh, there is a lot of stuff to be talking about in the footballing world for, especially for arsenal man united the two banter clubs of the league um but what are you saying Renz? you have a good weekend but, yeah not too bad bruv not too bad not too bad bruv i can't lie um two boring games yesterday the united game was boring um the city tottenham game was boring as well but you know what i mean bruv like it is what it is bruv i feel like a lot of teams are just going through the motions at the moment, bruv. Mm, yeah, that's it, man. Team teams that are teams that are struggling and trying to stay up, like Burnley. Yeah, mm. Brighton. They, they, them games were. I didn't watch the Burnley game. I see the highlights, but they they looked like they wanted it yesterday. They slapped mm. balls, man. Four nil away from home. That's pretty much kept them in the league. That. <laughs> yeah. Brighton. I watched the Brighton game the other night. They they were unlucky, man. Brighton Brighton played good football, man. But again, they're. I think they're kind of comfortable as well. I think the three in the bottom are going down. Yeah, I think all three of them. Yeah, are yeah. Going I, th I think that that's. I think that's set in stone now. Um, I'll be sad to see Fulham go, um, mm. for a few reasons. But I think they'll be back. I think they'll be back anyway. They're the kind of team that they're gonna have the financial backing in the championship. We've seen what Norwich and Watford have done, and I expect yeah. Fulham to do the same thing. Yeah, same, mate. Listen, Fulham's a good away trip as well, man. As if yeah. You get the boat trip and all that down the Thames, get on, get on the drink, get in the ground. <laughs> uh, and normally Arsenal beat them. So, yeah, it's, it's normally all good. But yeah. but, yeah, man, let's talk about that cup final. Yeah. My boy Myron dominated Lee. it, bruv. Oh, Myra, bruv, City Myra's dominated it. I've never seen a more one sided football match in my life. People talk oh, about man. Jose Mourinho, yeah, but Ryan Mason set up that team as defensive as you could possibly think. To think that Ndombele didn't get on, um, you start Lucas, who's a defensive right winger. He's like Willian's flipping clone or something. And then you've got flipping... Um, he started him. He started um, Lo Celso. He started Winks. Yeah. Brother, like... And then he brought on Sissoko. I was like... When I was looking at this, I was like, are these men trying to win this football match? Bro, they didn't even I think they were playing for penalties. I think they're playing for penalties, bro. Like, I heard City fans were cheering when Tottenham got the ball into the City half, bro, after about, like, 35 <laughs> minutes. They'd run, bro, it, was, it, was it was a disgrace, bro. It was a disgraceful <laughs> setup. If that was Mourinho, they would have hammered him. These guys and Eric Dyer played. Bro, like, that team, you do not. You do not, bro, set up like that in a cup final, man. Bro, like, you, you don't. Exactly. And, and and the thing is, like, a cup final, anything can happen, and it normally does. Like, we've seen Wigan mm. beat this lot in a cup final before, albeit mm. the FA Cup, yeah? Mm. No, sometimes the underdog can win, yeah? Like, it's a one-off game, which makes it even more funny that they sacked the one manager that probably could beat Pep in a one-off game in Jose. <laughs> <laughs> Their fans are in mourning, bruv. They're like, oh, we should have kept him. They should have as well. Yeah, and bruv, I don't think... Bruv, I don't even think that... City played great. I just think that Spurs didn't play at all. Do you know what I mean? Like, I, I don't... They literally went there and rolled over. Like, I've not I've not seen anything like it, bro. Like, the, the only spinal I've seen more one-sided that was when City slapped Watford, bruv. Yeah, yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? Six. And really and truly, that could have been a six yesterday because City, uh, bruv, Sterling, like, couldn't finish his tee, bruv. Like, I don't know... I was surprised he started to be fair, but he, he in the final third, he's very, very wasteful. And it's like Man City on another day could have absolutely like blown these guys, like blown them apart, man. It was it was a horrible performance. It was embarrassing. Honestly, if I was a Spurs fan, I'd feel sick because you get all the way to the final to do that. Mm. And that's and that's the thing, like fans were allowed in the ground. Imagine mm. paying, like, I don't know what they paid, but I'd imagine it would have been around 80 to 100 quid to watch that. They're going off yeah. of what I paid to, to go there before for a mm. final. I'd imagine they'd pay about that. So then go there, you know, you 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 have your meals, you have your drinks. Like it's not it's not a cheap day out a cup final, man. And yeah. to go there and witness that, bruv, I'd want a refund. Real talk. I'd be yeah, demanding. Horrible. Yeah, that that was shocking. Real talk. That was one of one of the most disgusting performances I've ever seen from a team in a cup final. Even yeah. when Man City played Wigan, yeah. Right, yeah. And Watford played Man City as well. But at least Watford were having a go. De La Feu was like chipping ball just wide and stuff like that. Yeah. Tottenham didn't even Baba, care, I bro. can't remember. I genuinely can't remember the Man City goalkeeper having anything to do. Mm. I Same. can't. 
That guys, if you remember a good save from him, let me know. But I genuinely can't remember one. Well, what did I you make of one? Um, Emmerich Laporte? Because he took out Lucas Moura real quick, didn't he? And he didn't get booked for it, yeah? He didn't. Right? And then he done the same again a bit later and they got a booking. Like, do, do you think he should have been off at that point? Because the commentary... Would, I've, I think both were yellows. I think he should have gone. But the thing is, with a final, a lot of these refs, when it's early on, don't want to book a player, innit? Yeah. You know what it is, yeah? It's a hard one because I was on the end of... Um... I was on the end of a bad decision like that last week with my team. Like, literally, one of my players got brought down in four minutes, yeah? Last man, we got the penalty, but he should have sent the player off and he didn't. Do you know what I mean? And at the time, I was like, oh, it's only four minutes in, the refs doesn't want to ruin the game. Do you know what yeah. I mean? But when you look back at it, it's like, bruv, I could have had 86 minutes against 10 men and we yeah. could have put eight past them. Do you know what I mean? So decisions like that, if they're not given, it doesn't matter what time a foul is a foul, yeah? If it's a yellow, it's a yellow. Yeah. Like, it doesn't matter. I, you can snap someone's ankle in the first minute of the game. It doesn't mean that it's not a red card, bro. Facts, you know what yeah, I mean? So for, so for me, if it's a yellow, you give a yellow. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. The one thing I would say is if he's on a yellow card, maybe he doesn't make the second challenge that, um, that you speak of, and maybe the player goes past him. Do you know what I mean? So again... If you don't book someone, it gives them kind of credit in the bank to then do some some fuckeries later. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. sometimes you have to book them early, bro. Like the thing I is, don't... Like the first one he was clean through from halfway though, wasn't he? he like, and there's yeah. like no way the court's catching him back up. Yeah, mm -hmm. he's quite nippy. That um, that that uh, Lucas Moore, isn't he? Yeah, so, yeah, he's rapid. He's rapid. He scored, but he was clean through. Yeah, like I don't. I ain't saying it's a red or anything. So it was too far out to be to be a goal scoring opportunity. But he's like you said. If it's a if it's a yellow, it's a yellow. It don't matter whether it's the first minute or the last minute. The funny thing is, how many times do you see in football a player who should have been sent off end up scoring the winner? <laughs> oh yeah, oh, bro, it happens a lot. A lot. It's poetic, man. It's almost like it's scripted, bro. You know when them things happen. Yeah, it's like EA Sports of uh, just sitting oh. there going right. We script this now. Yeah, Liverpool yeah. winner. <laughs> you have absolutely, bro. It happens so often, man. It happens so so often. So honestly, I wouldn't even be, bro. I don't know, man. Football's a weird one, man. I'm kind of getting to the point with football where it's like the officials, it's like no matter what game you watch, there's always decisions that you're questioning, bruv. And it's happening every week, every game, bro. Like it's getting ridiculous. I saw um, a West Ham player get sent off against Chelsea for oh, kicking the bro, ball away. Like, for clear... It's not even, bruv, it's not even a foul. Yeah. You got sent off for something that's not even a foul. Yes, um... He st he's, he stepped on Mason Mount as he's going to plant his feet after. But, bro, it's not even a free kick. Mm. It's not even a free kick, bro. Like, contact was made. That's life, bro. Football's not a no-contact sport. It's never been a no-contact sport. It's not basketball. It's a and contact the, sport. And that's the thing, right? If he hadn't have gone for the ball, yeah, then um, Mount would have been past him. Or yeah. Chilwell, whoever. I think it was Chilwell, actually. Oh, it might have been Mount. Either way, it's irrelevant. It, they no, would it would, no, it was Chilwell, actually. It was Ben Chilwell. Yeah. It was Ben Chilwell. Yeah, so he would have been past him, right? So what does he do? Like, not try and make the tackle and, and try and get the ball? Or does he just say, oh, I better not just in just in case I get sent off and then Chilwell's gone? Like, Oh, he's meant to not follow through with the kick, which isn't natural. <laughs> yeah. It's not natural to, to not follow through ball. with a kick, bro. Like, it's actually not possible to do that. And, and it's not possible to do that and get any length on the kick either. Do you know what I'm saying? So... Like, I don't, I don't what's he meant to do, bruv? Mate, it's, it's it's embarrassing. I've seen a few this season like it as well, like identical. There was one the other day, I can't remember who it was, but one the other day, and I, I was like, nah, that ain't even a foul, man. How can you how can you win the ball? Yeah, and then your follow through ends up like going down the back of his cuff. Like mm -hmm. there was no intent. Yeah, you can see that he didn't go and try and go and hurt him like sometimes you can go for the ball and really like, i think there was casemiro the other day on jordan Head, oh yeah, um, he went for the ball but he Mora. put it he went right through james milner bro. Bro, he, he was like i'm having you you stuck it on you stuck it on benzema earlier i'm yeah. and casemiro knew what he was doing yeah, that that potentially could have really injured james milner yeah mm -hmm. and you could see that he wanted to hurt him yeah that one there the weekend man that, that ain't even a yellow the one thing about the casemiro challenge yeah those them that challenge was so high 
he wouldn't have injured him, innit? He's just trying to go through him. You know them ones. It's one of them ones where, like, if you're that kind of player, you know what you're doing, innit? Like, do you know what I mean? You're not, you're not <laughs> aiming for that. Long his face when he walked off, bro. You knew he was like, yeah, yeah. that's fine. You know what you're doing, bro. You just want to catch man like him about shin height. Do you know what I'm saying? But make sure that you don't catch him with the studs. Just go through him, innit? That's all it is. Mm. Them kind of ones, yeah. They're just sore as hell, innit? And. Them things, that's that's you accept you're getting a yellow card. He ran the whole like half the length of the pitch to do that, so he knew he was taking the book in, innit? But bro, man was like Usain Bolt, he was fucking sprinting. Bro, as soon as he, he, was, Milner, bro, he was gone, he had no interest in the football there, none. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that's the thing. So, how are you seeing a man get sent off for actually clearing the ball and his foot's planted on him? And then you've got a guy that's absolutely cleaned someone out and got a yellow. Like, football doesn't make sense, bro. And that's why I say these officials need to be held. To account, like I remember Pogba got sent off against, I think it's you lot for something similar. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like when he stepped on the guy, yeah, when he was planting his feet after making a challenge and then he got sent off. And I was like, I was confused, bro. I was just like, there was, it was never a red. So, and the thing about VAR as well, which is horrible, is that, bro, everything in slow motion looks 10 times worse, bro. Yeah. So why are they <laughs> slowing it down? Like, watch it in real time. Mm. But this is the thing, yeah. Like you know that um, you you know that as soon as the referee goes over to the monitor, you know, you know it's done. Like if it, if it's debatable, yeah, and and the ref goes and has a look, you know that he's gonna he's gonna send him off, isn't it? Yeah, because they're obviously saying, yeah, I think it's a red, but I think maybe you should check it after last decision. No way. Like it's the same with um, a similar scenario, but it was the offside one. There's been a few offside this weekend. There's been loads this season, yeah. Bro, you could literally get a Rizzler paper out, yeah? <laughs> yeah. But it was, it's like, you're taking the fucking piss with this offside, bro. What happens to give an advantage to the attacker, yeah, yeah, to get more goals in the league? Where's that Where's that disappeared to now? Yeah. Like, it's mad. The, bro, the Pepe one was a fucking disgrace. Yeah, it's possible, yeah? bro. Mm. We're talking, like, millimetre. Yeah, like, come on, man. You're ruining the fucking game with all this VAR. VAR in itself is not a problem, yeah? And some instances, it has been used for good, yeah? But at the same time, the fucking idiots running. Bruv, I heard that. What's that dickhead's name that does BT? Peter Walton. Yeah. So did you see the Newcastle equaliser that Callum Wilson scored? No. So he's gone clean through on goal. Yeah. In the last minute, he, outside of the boot, he's gone to scoop it over the keeper. Yeah. So he's in the box. He's probably now seven yards out. He's gone to scoop it. Right. It's bounced off the goalkeeper. His arms are down in natural position where he's running. Mm. It's hit his arm. Yeah, bounced down and he's tapped it in. So they've gone, no, 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 VAR, no, handball. Yeah, so I was like, bro, how the fuck is he supposed to what, just chop his arms off? Yeah, bro, that's what I'm saying, bro. But like, even, even the whole natural position thing, Lee, bro. Like, honestly, yeah, if you're an athlete, yeah, the whole point, your arms are meant to counterbalance your legs. You don't see people do a 100-meter sprint with their hands by their side. <laughs> so <laughs> I, what, the what's body. a natural position? <laughs> There's no such thing as a natural position when you're doing sports. Your arms are for balance. So wherever yeah. your arms are, your arms are, bro. Do you know what I'm yeah. saying? Obviously, if your arms are up here, they don't need to be up here. But if they're below shoulder height, it's a natural position. Defenders shouldn't have to be running up to close you down and then putting their hands behind their back. Like, what, what the <laughs> fuck is that? <laughs> bro, that don't make sense. That means they're off balance. You know what I mean? As soon as I see a defender put their hands by their side, I'm just doing a body faint. And then I'm gone. They're off balance, bro. Like, you need your arms for balance, bro. As soon as you mm. put your hands behind your back, you can't change direction. Do you know what I mean? So the whole thing is just idiots that don't play football making rules, bro. You know bro, what I mean? You know what the funniest thing is, right? Peter Walton sat there because Joe Willock equalised and got him a draw in the end. He got a 95th-minute equaliser, bro, so justice was served. But it was funny because they went to Peter Walton in the studio and a lot of people were saying that in that instance, next season, Wilson's goal would stand. So Peter mm -hmm. Walton said, no, 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 no. What the rule, the law changes for next season. Think how backwards this is when I tell you this, right? So Peter Walton goes, if that happens again next season with Callum Wilson, it's disallowed again. But if it hits Callum Wilson's arm and bounces to a teammate and he scores, it's a goal. <laughs> like, what's the difference? The ball ended up in the fucking net. No, nah, like, because so I think what he's trying to say is, yeah, if he if it's classed as him controlling the ball with his arm, then yeah. But if it bounces off him and then goes to someone else, then it's a go for me. It's a load of nonsense because if that's the same thing, yeah. 
Mm. Yesterday, the ball got put into the box, hit Luke Shaw's arm, yeah? His arm was by his side, yeah. and then he cleared it. He used, the, he used his arm to control the ball, not on purpose, yeah. but he controlled the ball with his arm. The penalty wasn't given, and rightly so. But, I mean, there's no consistency. So, I the need to do one of two things, yeah? Either say that, yo, VAR's here, and it's down to the referee's discretion, and then we need to mic up the referees, and then they need to explain exactly why they're giving and not giving things, yeah? But these men are fucking cowards and they don't want to do it. Do you know what I mean? Don't give referees power to implement things, yeah? But don't allow us to hear what they're saying, bro. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Oh, wow. No. Because when you watch rugby, when you watch tennis, all, all of these umpires and all these guys are mic'd up, bro. Like, you can hear the conversation between them and the player and what their explanations are, bro. I'm sick and I'm tired of it, bro, because it's ruining the game of football. And one day, one of these players are just going to just lamp the ref, bruv. 100%. 100%. And I don't blame them. Now, honestly, yeah. because some of the stuff they're doing, yeah, and then they can hide after the game and they don't have to explain themselves. That's the thing. That's the biggest disgrace. thing for me. Is, like, anyone who comes out, Nuno Espirito Santo got fined 25 grand for saying something about the ref. I think it was Lee Mason. Yeah. Got fined 25 grand for saying he's not fit to referee. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Three, four months later, yeah, the same ref gave the, the free kick against, I think it was West Brom, where he blew the whistle twice. Yeah. And it was like, you could let him take it. And now you've blown it because the keeper weren't ready and you've disallowed it and all that fuckery. And it's in, it's out, shake it all about. But I've, I don't think that guy has, ever, um, has refereed a Premier League game since. I looked the mm. other day and I couldn't see. You know, it was like refereeing championship in League One. Probably shouldn't be refereeing. Yeah. And the thing is, if you come out and question him as a manager, yeah, then you get fined. If a player comes out and questions him, they get fined. Why are these people like, not allowed to have any accountability? Like, it just makes no sense to me, man. Like, but that's what I mean, because these guys are deciding football matches, so surely they should be accountable, just like everyone else. Hmm? Because you've given you've given the referees more power, but less accountability. Surely, with their power should come accountability. 100%. Surely it uh, should. 100%, bruv. Why, I'd like the referees to be interviewed after a game. Yeah, I think that would be lit. Yeah, because yeah. then... Then the fucking Jeff Shreves or whoever the fuck it is, or Laura Woods interviewing after the game or whatever, can ask them the questions, innit? Because obviously mm -hmm. they can see what happened. They can see what the fans' reaction is on social media and they can see some questions. They might think, oh, actually, I'll ask him that at the end of the game. Yeah, because yeah. it's getting way too confusing, man. It's getting stop, start, stop, start, man. Yeah, and like if you look, actually look at the amount of time the football is in play in a Premier League match, it's probably not even 45 minutes. <laughs> yeah, it's mad. It? <laughs> it's mad, isn't it? It's probably not because of the throw-ins, the corners. That's not in play, isn't it? I mm. guarantee the average of a Premier League game is probably about forty-five minutes. Yeah, that the ball is in play. Yeah, and I guarantee next season it'll be even less because of all this fucking about. But it's so make sure you're smashing the likes up. When, when they go over to VAR, how 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 long do they add on? Did, is there what a specific is, time? Because I know for substitutions, it's 30 seconds. For the use of VAR, did they add on like a minute or specific amount of time? I don't know because I've never heard it spoken about. And then sometimes you've you've got four minutes where they've wasted trying to get a decision. Then you've had four subs come on. Yeah, so you think it's six minutes stoppage time. Then they add four. <laughs> You're like, what's going on here? Like, it just makes no sense. The whole thing is a fucking shambles, mate. Yeah, and, and you know, I, I'd like to see it scrapped personally. I didn't want it in the first place. Yeah, the people that are making these laws up ain't got a scooby what they're doing. Yeah, and they just like fucking around with the game every season. Like they, every season, they'll bring in new laws. Now, like the handball one, yeah, look, at the end of the day, I think handball, when they say, is it deliberate and stuff like this and that, yeah, how do you know if it's deliberate? Like, and this man's doing a fucking Suarez against Ghana, bruv, and trying to save it. Mm. Yeah, fucking, or, um, or a Kieran Gibbs or whatever against fucking Chelsea trying to dive. Mm. Yeah, that's deliberate. How many times is it deliberate handball? Probably maybe 0.01%. Probably even yeah. less than that, bro. Like, honestly, mm. like, instinctively, as a footballer, like, it's not even reflex to use your hands because you've grown up using your feet your whole life. Do you sure. know what I mean? So you have to be a real cheat, yeah, to use your hands. It's like, it's very clear when it's deliberate because it's not natural. Do you yeah. know what I mean? It's very, very clear when it's a deliberate handball because it's it's literally 
It's literally, you can see them physically moving their arm towards it. How many handballs do you see someone putting their arm out and doing? Bruv, you never see that. More of the time, ball hits their arm. They're running or whatever, or they turn around and ball's hitting man on the back of his arm. It's like, bruv, I'm not even looking at it. <laughs> like, 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 what? It, yeah. bro, the whole thing's a joke, bro. Like, like, legit. Like, the handball rule is a joke. Back in the day, they used to say, yeah, if it's, um, if it's intentional handball, most of the time handball is not intentional in it. But mm. I just think that you have to use common sense. You have to use common sense, but these referees don't have any. Mm. So the yeah, letter of the law thing, that, um, the letter of the, the law the thing is a cop out. Not... Oh, it's a cop out because they yeah, give 100%. you they give you such rigid rules. You yeah. can literally just say, "Oh yeah, by the letter of the law." But you can interpret the letter of the law any how you want because they're not they're not they're, they're vague as fuck. Yeah. And that's the, that's the thing Peter Walton said the other day because I think Chris Sutton was sticking it on him about this this um, next season <clears throat> it'd go to another player and score and, and Peter Walton kept saying but you can't score a goal with your hand. So yeah, why is, why is it offside, bro? They said that you could only be offside, yeah, with mm. a part of your body you could score with. That was how yeah. the rule was interpreted before. Yeah. When did that change? Because I wasn't made aware that that was that that changed. Same, bro. Pepe was not offside the other night, yeah. Uh, we didn't deserve to win the fucking game anyway, but Pepe was not offside. Yeah, he was bang in line. Their shoulders were in line. Yeah. So I'm like, how are they giving that offside? Everything is in line. Surely you give the advantage to the attacker. And we had a penalty, yeah, like that was rescinded because of that offside. We'd already, yeah. Pepe was starting down the penalty, bruv, ready to step up and put us like 1 0 or whatever it was. I think, we, yeah, we would have gone 1 0 up. Yeah. And I knew at that point, as soon as that got taken off of us, I said to my father, no, I was like, we're going to lose this 1-0, bruv. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I mean, that dopey twat that we got in goal, fuck my life, bruv. People think he's good, you know. Bruv, how <laughs> did he do that, though, bruv? Like, honestly, like, if he tried to do that on purpose, he couldn't do that. No, nah, 100%, bruv. He could try that, he that a thousand done. times. He's never doing it. Never. It's mad. Really but listen, let's move on to, um, we won't talk about our two games because they were fucking dead. Yeah, there was nothing yeah, to the, talk the, about there. Eh? Let's move on to the um, the protests, yeah? Because, like, obviously, you would have seen how many thousands of people turned up at the Emirates, bruv. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't yeah, believe I'm it either. Shocked. You lot done a great <laughs> job, man. I can't lie, bruv. Like, I never expected Arsenal fans to be out like that. But you know what? If anyone's been through it, Arsenal fans have been through it, innit? You know what I mean? So, <laughs> yeah, it, made, it, it made sense, man. The pictures, like, it looked crazy. There were thousands of people out there. And you know what, yeah? If you lot keep, if you lot keep doing it, you could get rid of Kroenke because... He doesn't really want to be there anyway. Do you know what I mean? So it's kind of a thing. If they keep applying the pressure, they can get him out. I think out of all the all the clubs, I think Arsenal are most likely to get rid of their owner if they keep applying the pressure. You think so, yeah? Yeah, out of Definitely. all of them. Liverpool, you saw the Henry brother come out, do the little the, the little scripted um little speech with the teleprompter. He ain't going nowhere, mate. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and then well, and I mean, and, and the Glazers gave United some little written bullshit on the website, didn't even get a video. Do you know what I'm saying? So and Cronky, that yeah, they'll put stuff on the website and that, but no, I mean he and bruv, he don't want to be there, bruv. Like keep it all the way 100, bro. He don't want to be there, man. It's one of them ones where if he gets the three we, billion dollars, he, he's he's out of here, bro. I think um I, I personally think Tottenham are the least likely to sell. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Because they had about 20 people turn up, bruv. So there's no pressure <laughs> being applied there. Just, man yeah, came with yeah. a banjo and all sorts of stuff. Man's got his banjo out. He's like fucking, he's got his microphone. Yeah. Some old girl had been in the club shop holding up a banner saying Enoch out, Levy out. She's got the fucking new merch in her hand. So like, that club is a shambles from top to bottom, man. Yeah. But we've got, um, we've obviously did our protest and there was what maybe five six thousand maybe even more i haven't seen if there's yeah been yeah people. i heard it was at least 5k which is absolutely well, I mean, it was like fucking mad brother I, I couldn't believe it it was like watching arsenal fans traveling to a game to watch the game in the stadium it was just mm. thousands of people flocking from everywhere man yeah it was mad but then obviously you had your yours the next day man united mm. then again bruv the fucking scenes man like the amount of people that have rocked up, and that weren't apparently the the only one you're doing. Apparently, there's another one next weekend. Next think, weekend, yeah. Mm. And apparently, that one's going to be even bigger. So, fucking, what? Obviously, Glazers and and Conky die, bro. These people are massive, yeah. Like in terms of financially, like with their assets and stuff like that. I think Man United still has been the biggest club value 
sold in the Premier League when they bought it. And I think that didn't even touch a mill. Yeah, and that's why I'm kind of sh shocked that pe people think that they can get an owner out when it's going to cost two, three billion quid a, a, a pop. And Man United would be even more than that. Yeah, United's four billion dollars, whatever that is in pounds, it's a lot, isn't it? And that um, is a lot. yeah, it's mad, bro. Like the thing is, when you look at the amount of money that these clubs are bringing in, why would they get rid of them unless they're genuinely, genuinely fed up with them? You know what I mean? And I don't really know. I really don't know. I just think that Manchester United, being one of the biggest brands on planet Earth, why? Why are you going to get um, bullied out of the club by a few friends here yeah, that are going to shut up if you sign a few players? Because, <laughs> exactly. do you know what I mean? Because that's all that's going to happen. Right? If we give them Jaden Sancho and they'll, they'll piss off for another year. Do you know what I mean? Mate, that's the honest truth. Saying, oh that's God, what these guys are like. Bro. We're sweet, bro. Everyone will stop and they'll go back to trusting the process again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't tr trust me. I don't, I, don't tr I don't trust these fans, innit? Legit, I don't trust them to keep the noise up. I don't trust them. You know what I'm saying? I've seen many false thorns with this football team, bro. I'm fed up. Honestly, I've seen false thorns with managers. I've seen false thorns with the fans, bro. Do you know what I mean? We were meant to do a walkout and then they signed Bruno Fernandes, yeah? And Oli came out and fucking said, oh, don't walk out on us. And they bottled it. Mm. They, they Mate, bottled it, bro. See, that, that's, what, that's why I get the ump with, with, uh, with our fans at times because uh, I said to you the other day that... You know, most of the people that are going to be on these protests, brother, are either going to buy the the um, the merchandise when it comes out or renew their season ticket. Yeah, mm. so it's like, but then like, I, I was watching Saeed with um, with Adam and Statman, and just before I was supposed to, like to, it was on Friday night. I was just about to start my stream, so I was just having a cigarette, listening to them, and they were saying about protest. And I said, yeah, it's like, but if you want to protest, protest with the wallet, bruv. Yeah. Bruv, that's Sorry. the only way, bro. Let the stock prices plummet. That's how you get your voices heard. Mm. Mate, that's so the only Saeed, way. Saeed countered that, though, yeah? And he said, and he made a good point, yeah? He said, I've had my season ticket for years, and my love for um, for Man United is bigger than my love for Glazers. He goes, and I feel I can do more if, if I'm inside the stadium than if I'm not there at all, which, which is a fair enough point, isn't it? Yeah, but yeah, well, what are you going to do inside the stadium? Nothing, bro. Like, you're going to do what you're going to do on this platform. You know what I mean? What are you going to do? Run on the pitch with a megaphone, bruv? Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> bruv, you can't <laughs> do nothing. Bruv, you can't do nothing in the stadium, bro. You can do absolutely nothing in the stadium. Like, that's a myth to me, bro. you got more power sitting right here in front of the camera. Going in the stadium ain't going to do nothing, bro. Like, that's just how it is. The bottom line is a lot of Man United fans know that if they give up their season ticket, yeah, there's like a, a flipping 10-year waiting list or something like that. Same, so they yeah. say, in it, but there's ways around that. But yeah, come on. Either, yeah. either way, like they say, there's a long, long waiting list. So basically, people are scared to give up their season ticket because they'll lose all their perks. And yeah, that's all it's down to. But the bottom line is, bro, like, yeah, unless you're hitting them in the pocket, there's no reason, no reason for these men to sell. None. Exactly. Mate, when, when Wenger went, yeah, he didn't go because there was five or six protests over two or three seasons. He went because you could see the um, the Fly Emirates white writing on the chair at the Emirates, bro, on the chairs because there was no fucker in the ground. Yeah. Like yeah. literally 20,000, 10,000, 15,000, game after game. And they just went, boy, we're out of here. See you later. You're gone, mate. You're gone. And if you think, right, on match day, yeah, like Man United's club shop are sell thousands, probably probably maybe a hundred thousand quids worth of stuff. Yeah, yeah probably the joke, same. Yeah, and that's the thing. Then you go inside in in the actual stadium. Yeah, you go and get a drink. You go and get food. There's another probably, I don't know. That's probably that would probably be millions of pounds on match day. Yeah. Then you then you've got the cost of the ticket if it's an individual ticket rather than a than a season ticket. Then if you break down the cost of the season ticket per game. Yeah, bro, this is a mad amount of money we're talking here, yeah? And mm -hmm. my argument to people that say, yeah, but I don't want to give it up because it'll take 10 years to get it back is, yeah? Well, guess what? Just because somebody else might come and take it, you've done your bit because you're so adamant, yeah? Once the owner gets out, cool, it might take you another eight years, but guess what? You'll know that you was a part of that getting him out. Yeah, yeah. so surely you can take that sacrifice. But that's the thing, like, it is a hard one because if you have been going since before they were here, then why should you? But yeah, but then, time, well, there you go. So you're absolutely proving, you're, you're actually proving their point. 
which is we can treat you however we want and you're not going to go nowhere anyway because your yeah, love of the badge it. is is more than how much you hate me so i'm going to stay here and continue to abuse you bro it's that simple so th there's only one there's only one way to do it bro like there's no other way bro do you know what i mean saying uh being at the games and that is that you can do what the fuck can you do there you're gonna go there spend money in there put more money into the thing you're gonna buy your ticket buy your food when you're there whatever do you know what i'm saying it don't make no sense all you're doing is strengthening um the manchester united brand and currency uh by pumping more money into the football club so don't you can't come out and say that right i, I can make more of an impact going you can't the only thing the only thing you can do is pull a banner out and that go global that's no, it. you'll pull a banner out and get kicked out of the stadium. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the little the little fucking stewards will start fucking kicking off and get you banned. Yeah, it's like, like I, I just think, like, regardless of whether other people will take your ticket, like you have to say, yo, I'm so against this person that I am not paying. Yeah, I'm not paying. If somebody else does, cool. Yeah, cool. Let them pay. At least you ain't paying. Yeah, mm. I, I just don't understand it, man. Like, I genuinely don't. And I think, like, the fact that Man United were sold for nearly 800 million quid and now they're 4 billion, yeah, they're probably sitting there, the Glazers, thinking, well, we could get this up to 8 billion. Right, in another but but that's what the Super League would have done. The Super mm. League would have probably doubled... And that the, ain't dead and buried yet either. Yeah, like, the Super League would have doubled the price of the club. You know what I'm mm. saying? That's what it would have done and, and that's what the Glazers wanted. So now that hasn't happened, they're still going to be trying to find other ways to milk the football fans. you got a new sponsor coming in next year. I mean, this ain't over, mate. You know what yeah. I mean? This ain't over. They're going to continue to try and milk the fans, bro. Like, the only time I can see them selling is when is when the the profit margins um, dwindle, yeah, and the shareholders become less happy, bro. And that, that ain't going to happen no time soon, bro. Exactly. And, th and this is another thing as well, right? With our owner, yeah, uh, people say that, Oh, we've lost 100 million quid in the last 12 months, which is true. We have as a club. But, bro, you better believe, yeah, on match day number one next season, if fans are allowed in that ground, instead of it being £5.50 for a pint, it's now going to be £7. The match day um, program outside will go from five quid to six quid. Yeah, do you know what I'm saying? These little, and the thing is, because fans will be so excited to go back to games, they'll fucking pay it. Of course. Which had covered the costs over the course of another year or so. It had covered the hundred million quid lost. Yeah, and this is what people don't understand. Like every single thing in that stadium, I, it wouldn't surprise me if the price of this new shirt, when it comes out, even though Adidas get most of the money, I guarantee it's not seventy quid this season or yeah. it next season. Sorry, I guarantee it'd be close to eighty. Yeah, because they'll just gradually bump it up another five quid, and people will just buy it because they like it. Do you know what I mean? Mm. It's like. That's how they, that's how it goes, and they know they've got everyone by the bollocks, which is why they do it. Yeah, yeah. What you, what's anyone going to do if anyone's got an issue? You either don't go, pay it, or buy the fucking club. Yeah, yeah. Like you can't buy the club. Yeah, you can decide not to go, or you can decide to shut the fuck up and pay it. Yeah, it makes no sense to me, man. Like I, I said, it's just they're the three options, isn't it? But I don't see him. I don't see him selling our club. I don't see yours being sold anytime soon. I think. I think none of them will. None of them four. If anyone's going to be sold first, it'll probably be Newcastle. <laughs> like, yeah, you know but them, I mean? yeah, them yeah, Americans are, are vultures, isn't it? They're just about their money, isn't it? So they're gonna they're gonna bleed whatever club. They're gonna exhaust all the assets and whatever before they can leave. Do you know what I mean? Mm. That's what it is, hundred percent. And that's why we shouldn't celebrate top four, bro. Well, bro, all that money goes into the owner's pockets anyway. Like, honestly, I don't care about any of these things, bro. Like, I don't. You see me now, as a football fan, I just care about watching good football. That's all I care about because the rest of the game is gone, mate. Yep, 100%. The rest that's of the like, game is gone. Hmm. That's why I'm looking forward to Champions League this week. We're going to see Chelsea Madrid or Madrid Chelsea. Yeah, yeah we're going to see we're going to see City up against PSG. That, that looks fucking fireworks, bro. That's going to be a mad mm. game. So it'll probably be nil nil now. I've given it a kiss of death, but we're going to see some. We're going to see some proper players. We're going to see some proper teams, proper managers. Yeah, at proper playing football, not just sitting back and like doing fucking shittiness in the cup final. Like mm -hmm. even if even if like obviously it doesn't matter what combination of two teams get to this Champions League final. Yeah, they're both going to go for it in the final. We already know that. Yeah, they're, yeah. they're going to be cautious with it, but but at the same time they're going to give it a go. 
Yeah. You sit and watch Tottenham yesterday, bro. You're just like, wow, this lot don't even care. They're just happy to be here. Like, yeah. so, I mean, it's perfect. It's Make sure you slap the likes up. 990 people watching right now. Slap the likes up. Make sure you subscribe to Rance's channel. It's the blue link in the title, the hyperlink. It takes you straight there. Um, let's move it on, man. Um, Eric Bailly signed a new contract. Mm. Um, a lot of injuries in the last four years that have kept him out for probably nearly two seasons in that mm. four seasons. Every time I've seen him play, I think he looks unbelievable. I'm like mm. really impressed with him. But are you, well, I know you're probably not surprised that you've given him a new deal. Would you have kept him? Yeah, I I, I like Eric Bailly a lot. I'm more concerned about why he stayed, isn't it? Um, because he's our best defender and he's clearly third choice centre back at the club. So the fact that he stayed either shows me yeah, that deep down he knows, yeah, that he ain't going to get that money nowhere else, yeah, because he's injury prone. Or he doesn't have any aspirations to be the first choice centre back at the club. Mm. So, and he's just happy to sit down on the money. Either one doesn't quite sit right with me because there was loads of noise before in the, in the media saying he's not happy with his, a reduced role at the club and when he's been fit, he's not playing. But then you sign a new contract anyway. That don't make no sense to me. So for me, that, that either tells me either he don't have faith in himself to stay fit or he he's just signed for the money. Either one, it, do, it doesn't show... Um, it doesn't show really um, anything for me to be super, super positive about. I thought that he should have left, bruv, to go and play play f um, week in, week out somewhere else because he's good enough. Yeah, he's, de he's, great, mate. he's definitely better than both the centre-backs that start in front of him. Right, He has less Easy. errors. He's quicker. Yeah, technically he's better. Bro, he's better yeah. on the ball. He's better, bro. He's just yeah. better in Errorly every way, better. bro. Right, and, and maybe, maybe he's just, maybe it's just comfortable. It's the money, yeah. bro. It's the money. That's what Manchester United do. They overpay. Yeah. How much is he yeah. getting paid on this new deal? Do you know? I don't know. Um, but United, what they do, they overpay to keep players. And then we can't get rid of them. Not that I'd want to get rid of Eric Bailly. But I'm saying they literally, um, yeah, they literally overpay these players. And they overpay mediocre players. And United struggle. Like, who's taking Dan James from us on 50000 a week? <laughs> Dan James is shocking, bro. He's I on 50k. Like Who is taking him, yeah? Because the, <laughs> cause, bro, he's a League One level footballer at best, yeah. No one in the league, no one in League One can afford 50 grand a week. No one even in a championship is gonna pay 50 grand a week um for him. So what Premier League team is gonna want him for 50 grand? Like, bro, it don't make no sense. So when I look at it, United are always overpaying players and then they struggle to offload them. It's literally the story of the club. So um, Eric Bailly would have got like a big pay rise and he'll be happy to stay at the club and just vibes it up, bruv, on his money. But from a career point of view, I think he's like 26, 27 now. Like that's his last big contract, bruv. He ain't going to... Now, if he's not starting for Man United now, he ain't got no ambition. That's the, that's the thing. Like, if, if, if you work it out, let's say you're paying him 200 grand a week for four years, yeah? That's 10 million a year for four years. That's 40 million, yeah? Mm. Man United have probably looked at that and said 40 million to keep Eric Bailly or we do 40, 50, 60 million plus wages on going out and signing someone. Well, that's what it is. It's always cheaper to yeah. sign someone, um, extend their contract and give them a lot more money because it's a money-saving exercise. And that's another reason why I know these owners don't give a shit, bruv. They don't give a shit about this club. Because if you look at Man City, they'll sign a player for one season. And if it doesn't work out, they'll just sell him and fuck him off, bruv, and buy yeah. someone else. That's why they're <laughs> successful. That's why Pep's been successful. Because he signed, I think he came in, he got rid of um, Joe Hart, signed a goalkeeper, weren't happy with him, fucked him off, got another one. Do you know what I'm saying? Signed three wingbacks in his first season. And they didn't feel any way to get rid of dead wood, bro. They weren't just keeping players because it was cheaper. And and that and that's the difference. United be keeping these players and extending contracts because it's cheaper than actually going out and buying another buying player. Proper bro. quality, <clears throat> and that's the problem. Once you have got a club that does that, we do it as well. The amount of fucking new contracts these dead players have been getting over the years, mate, is mad. Well, when you gave um, when you gave Phil Jones a new deal, that's when I knew that you were dead and buried as a football club. Mm. Yeah, it was like Phil Jones. He shouldn't even be at fucking United, mate. 
Yeah, let, and yeah, and Andreas like, Pereira as well, bro. Like United are flipping. Yeah. United are a joke of a football club. I'm not gonna lie, bro. Like from a purely football standpoint, the club's a joke. Mm. You know what I mean? Like away from all the the rich history and all of that stuff, bro. The football club itself, as a footballing entity, is laughable, bro. And and, that, and that's exactly what happened to us as well. Both of our clubs have like had such a big fall from grace. Like people, thank you one at a time. People were um, people will pin it on the owners, yeah. And listen, your owners, I think, are worse than ours. They've taken two billion quid out of your football club. Mm. Yeah, our owners are taking six million. That's it. Yeah, which is what one one. Yeah, that's three months of Mesut Ozil's wages. <laughs> no, it's not even that. It's, it's two months of Mesut Ozil's wage. Fuck you know. Yeah, like no, it is. It's three months. It's three months of Ozil's wages. But the point is. When your when your club are taking two billion pounds out, bruv, the money they've taken out, they could have bought Arsenal. Yeah. Like, yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? It's two billion. We're having it. Yeah, obviously you can't do that because you can't own two clubs, but mm. that's how much money you could buy Arsenal fucking football club, bruv. That's how much they've stripped out of your football club. Yeah. And it's like, you know, they've used the fact that you are a massive global brand. Yeah, you are stable. Yeah, you're not gonna go bust anytime soon. And they can use that to maximize bank loans and get bigger like ventures going on all over the world. Stan Conkey's done it to a smaller degree. He's taken six million out, but he ain't taken any money out of this club officially. Yeah, he mm. might have taken some little bits out that we don't know about, but he's taken six million out in what fucking 13, 14 years that he's been here. Yeah. Yeah, which on paper isn't actually that bad. But no. they are still doing the same thing. They're still they're still using two of the biggest football clubs on the planet. Yeah, as a as a fo uh, like a focal point to go and get them bigger deals somewhere else. Yeah, because... they're, they're just assets to them. They don't care about yeah. football in it. That's all they are. It's just part of a portfolio. That's all it is. It's like, oh, look what I've got. Use it as collateral to get something else. That's all it is, bro. Do you know what I mean? The fact that they haven't even cleared the debt on Manchester United tells you everything you need to know. Yeah. No, I mean, yeah. I think the debt the debt's higher now than it was when they took over. I remember seeing something that said you pay 40 or 60 million or something um, in interest on that loan every year. But that's what I'm trying to say. I, I, the bad. debt is actually more. Than, the, the debt's actually more now. And obviously with inflation and stuff like that as well and interest rates and all of these things, because I'm sure it wasn't a, um, it was a, it wasn't a flat interest. I'm sure the interest rate would have fluctuated as well. Yeah. And the, and the thing is the cost of living is going up. Everything's mm. going to get more expensive in the next couple of months, yeah. So, you know, if you if you need and if you want somebody to come and buy your football club, like literally right now is the only time it's going to happen, mm. yeah. If ever, and that's only if they want to get rid of it, because in the next two or three years, then football clubs are going to be worth probably half a billion or a billion pound more than they are now, yeah. yeah because everything starts getting back to normality again, yeah. You start progressing, you try and get better players in, you move up the table, you maybe win a title, you might get to a final in the Champions League or something. All of a mm. sudden, all eyes are on your clubs and uh, you get bigger commercial deals. I mean, some I was looking at some of the commercial deals you lot have, man. It is just a fucking long list. Yeah, sponsorship. It is fucking ridiculous how many deals United have. I think you've yeah. got Cadbury's Legoland, like fucking the <laughs> team viewer. Bro, it's crazy. And like, Every every top club now seems to have a car dealership in, with them. Yeah, a, a car, company. a watch. Yeah, yeah, everything. Yeah, it's mad. A jeweler's, bro. We've got beer companies. Yeah, we got we got free beer companies with us as well. And it's like you know, fan fans back in the day when we were growing up didn't know who the owner was, didn't know who sponsored us, other than what was on the t shirt. Yeah, only yeah. that's all we knew. Yeah, yeah. Now with um, with social media and with the fact that you know everyone's so invested in it now, and you can get all the information real quick on the internet. Like you can find out everything about the clubs now, and it's like kid, the kids these days—they're so invested in it compared to what we were when we were younger. It was just like, yeah, Man United are playing, or yeah, Arsenal are playing. Like, and because we were so good back then, the mm. rivalry was lit, bro. The rivalry now is as fucking bad as our football club. Like, yeah. it's just—it's pathetic, isn't it? And I don't see either of them selling. I genuinely don't. And I think that the fact that they're scrimping and scraping. Is because they don't want to go out and do the money now because you would have lost money in this pandemic. So you're gonna see maybe maybe one big signing, maybe Jaden Sancho. Um, mm. other than that, I wouldn't expect a lot if I was Man United. And for Arsenal, boy, 
We'll probably see David Luiz signed up to an extension for one year. We'll probably see Danny Ceballos and Odegaard being our only two signings. Yeah, maybe Matt Ryan. But all the players are here now already. I, I don't see us going out there and doing 70, 80, 90 million this summer. I can't see it. Bro, next month, we've got to give the government 120 million quid back. <laughs> like, do you know what I'm saying? We're done. We're finished, bro. Like, both of us Jeez. right now are finished on the football pitch. Yeah, yeah, I think so. You know what I mean? Saying that, both of us could somehow win the Europa League, so that'd be funny. We'll see, mm. we'll see how that ends. Do you know what I'm saying? Because Are you yeah. confident? Are you got no. confident on Thursday? No, I'm not. I'm never confident when United are playing because I know that we should win games, but bruv, you know what I mean? We should have won yesterday and we didn't. So mm. and we didn't even look like winning yesterday. So again, it depends on what United turns up. Yeah, same same with us, mate. We we seem to turn it on with five minutes to go when it's too late. It's like <laughs> we start off, we start off good, yeah. We start off really great, yeah. We like go flying at the goal, pass, move, probably. We're like, oh, we're looking good here. But then after twenty minutes, they go, "Is that all they've got? Fuck it, let's have a go." Yeah. And mm. then the longer the, go, the game goes on, the more they take a, a grip of the game. We go one nil down. All of a sudden, bish bash bosh, three subs come on, and we just push everyone forward and have a go at the end. I mean, come on, man. We should be battering teams, man. Everton have fucking been dog shit in the last eight games. Yeah. yeah. Beat pretty much everyone in the last two months. Yeah. Right, and they come to the Emirates first time they've done the double over us since 85 86. First time they've beaten us at the or our ground mm -hmm. since 96. Yeah, it's fucking ridiculous, bro. That's the first time we've lost nine home games or saying since 1930. Like, it's just record after record, bro. 18, 18 home games this season, we've scored 17 goals. <laughs> yeah, that's not the one, still. That's not the bro, one, that's bro. The form, man. Mm. And, in, and in, the, in the 13 games, that we've lost or drawn at the Emirates this season. Yeah, lost or drawn in the 13 games, we've scored four goals at home. That's Bro. disgusting, isn't it? Yeah, mate, I see it the other day. Big up to David as well. Um, Balogun signed a new contract and uh, he says, <laughs> Arsenal made more of a song and dance about it as Man City did with KDB. Well, KDB didn't even have an agent. Yeah. Yeah. It didn't have an agent, didn't do a fucking video to put a video out and all that bollocks. Man City put it out there saying, we're delighted to announce Kevin De Bruyne has signed a new extended contract until 2024 or whatever. That was it. Yeah, no video jumping around, dancing, singing. Like, I don't mind all of that. Right? But when you're doing it for a 19-year-old who's not played 90 minutes, and I rate Balogun, I think he's going <laughs> to... Yeah. But when you're putting videos out there like of a Bamiyang with a mask and an egg timer, and then he flops all season... Yeah, and you're doing shit with Balogun as well when like he can't even get in the starting eleven because of the manager yeah. not picking. Him. Like, come on, man! What are we? A fucking youth club? Like, is it is it like a fucking youth center or something? We're just going to go for a jolly up because that's all it seems like. <laughs> We're not serious, bro. We're not a serious club, Man City. No fucking bullshit. Kevin De Bruyne is probably the player. If you was to pick a player from Man City to say sum up Man City as a football club, it'd be De Bruyne. Yeah. No bullshit, straight, honest footballer, very good footballer. Yeah, he don't want no drama. He just wants to get out there, play football and go home. Yeah. Yeah, he don't want to be on Instagram fucking dancing and singing and all that bollocks. Like, he don't want to be dropping. He ain't even got a fucking agent, bruv. That's all you need to know about that guy, man. The geezer yeah. ain't got an agent. Straight yeah. up footballing man. He just wants to play football. Yeah, and he fucking he's good at it as well. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, he's not too bad, to be fair. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. can you imagine... Can you imagine being that good at football, knowing that you could get stupid amounts of money and you, you go, nah, I don't want an agent, bruv. I'll just negotiate myself. Yeah, you go, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, cool. Tony Adams used to do that back in the day. Bro, a yeah. lot of players used to do that, man. I think you know, Ryan Giggs' <laughs> mum used to do his, like, it's just one of... Yeah. Bruv, like, it gets like that, innit? Like, it used to be like that. But now, on and off the pitch, football's a business now for clubs and for players now, innit? Like, the game's completely changed. So, we just have to... Except that this is where we are right now. So when you see throwback players like Kevin De Bruyne, even when you watch him, he's very much a throwback kind of footballer. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like just yeah. no frills, no spills, just very good, just goes about his business, bro. Do you know what I mean? And that's just what it is. Very understated, doesn't really talk too much, just gets on with it. Yeah, very rarely see him in the media doing interviews or stuff like that. Like never see him in the newspapers for the wrong reasons. That's it. He's been their star player for a long time, and I, bro, honestly, if somebody played his voice now, I wouldn't even know it was his. Don't know what he sounds like. Fact. 
Yeah, that's you know true, I mean? man. I don't know what he sounds like. I don't know his voice. And he's been them one of their main guys for so long and you, you hear nothing about him. Yeah, similar to Burkamp as well. Like Dennis mm. Burkamp never used to talk very much. And that's what I mean. Like that, that I like that. Yeah, no, it's true, man. Same. I'm I'm like that. I just want players to go out there and play football. Yeah, mm. and like and do the job on the pitch. Don't be coming out chatting shit like Granite Jacker. Oh, I do my talking on the pitch, and then you do fuckery every week. <laughs> yeah, like seriously, you're taking the mick, mate. I do my talking on the pitch, bruv. You, you ain't doing nothing on the pitch, bruv. Yeah. Mm. And then like I see after the game, he was laughing and joking with Ancelotti. It's like you do realize you dopey twat. You let Richarlison spin you, yeah. He then got back into a good position, Xhaka. Yeah. Mm. And I thought, nah, this is carnage, brother. Richarlis, that was a masterstroke from it. Well, it wasn't even a masterstroke because I would have done it. We were playing Xhaka left back. So Richarlison, instead of playing left side, he went, yeah, you go and fucking play against Xhaka today, bro. Yeah. And, bro, my man sent him to the shop for milk, bro. Man got dropped real quick. <laughs> right. And then afterwards, he's laughing with Ancelotti. And I'm like, what the fuck are you laughing at? We just lost 1 0. What are you laughing at? I have at? no idea, bro. When we drew with Leeds, he was laughing with Alioski, who got Pepe sent off. It's like, what are you laughing at? And this guy's doing his talking on the pitch. Bruv, the only thing he's doing is chatting shit and shitting on the pitch. Yeah, he is fucking useless, bro. I can't stand that, geezer. You see how you are with Dan James? That's me with Xhaka and Bellerin, bro. Yeah, no, like... I, I, bro, I hear you. Like, every club, they're always going to have one player they can't stand, innit? Like, and one player they feel sums up the regime in it and i feel like dan james and scott mctominay sum up manchester united as a yep. football club do you know what i'm saying like no talent just flipping passion merchants bro the fucking knee slide badge kisses that's all they are bro <laughs> no i mean dan james is an absolute disgrace do you know what i mean he's literally the personification of our manager like not good enough to be there just happy to be there and Scott McTominay, the other day, um, Salet Ferguson was coming out giving him high praise and that, and he goes and puts oh. in a disaster class yesterday. In the first half, he completed seven passes in 45 <laughs> minutes. I'm lucky I didn't watch that game. I, I can't lie. I'm lucky I didn't. I was playing golf, bro. I, I was like, yep. Yeah. When I see that, ended joking, thing, I was like, that was the best decision I've made is to not watch that game. Bro, it's a joke thing, bro. Honestly, when I look at this football club, I'm laughing, bro. Like, I'm, I'm laughing. Like, it's, it's embarrassing. It's yeah. actually embarrassing. Like, so it's one of them ones where as much as I like bantering people's football clubs, right? If you're a Man United fan, you can't laugh at anyone, bro. No, you can't. Clubs are stable. Same. Yeah, same, brother. I had I had a little um I had a little wind up with uh with, with Chelsea and, and Spurs the other day when we did our protest, yeah. Because I know Chelsea weren't protesting against their owner. Yeah, when, when they did that one the other week. No, nah, they weren't. It wasn't about their owner. Yeah, I, I wound them up, bruv. Every Chelsea fan bit, bruv. Yeah, I'll put mm. um Arsenal putting uh, Chelsea and Spurs to shame as if we didn't already know London is red. <laughs> yeah, bro, the nibbles on that yeah, were mad. So, literally, bro, I had to turn notifications off. It had like fucking 6,000 likes or something, bro. It was going fucking mad. Yeah, and fucking, all, I went through the comments the next day. I just read a, a few of them. Chelsea fans going, yeah, you fuck it. We weren't protesting against that. I was like, you dickheads. I was on a wind up. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Obviously, we know that they, that they ain't got a problem with Roman. You know what I'm saying? No, they, they they Man City, like Man City, like they ain't got no issues with their owner other than they don't want to go into that Super League, yeah. Mm. But like I think they both appreciate as well what both of their owners have done for their clubs, and they both mm. do give a shit. Mm. Yeah, whereas our two owners couldn't care less. And they're actually didn't... putting their own money in, you know what I'm saying? Mm. They've been putting their own money. Both of them bankrolled it for the first five years or so until yeah, FFP five, five to ten up. years. I think Roman said that um after ten years he wants the club to be self-sustaining, and now it is. Yep. And that's it's just mad. what it is. It's mad. But um, but yeah, man, fucking smash the likes up, people. Come on, there's only 251 likes. There's 1,100 people here, man. Come on, what's going on here? Well, what the fuck is the hold up? You absolute rats in the chat. Come on, rat army assemble, bruv. Yeah, rats in the chat, bruv. It's amazing how many more new rats come up every day, bruv. Yeah, because like, <laughs> more and more games we play... The more rats appear, bruv. It's like they're infesting the whole gaff, bruv. <laughs> no, that's it, bro. Make sure you smash the light, people. You already know. Right, let me ask you about... I watched your Mares video yes, uh, yesterday, yeah? Yeah. Like, I, I was going to watch it the other day, but I fucking had a phone call and I forgot to go back on it, yeah? Bruv, yeah. that guy, man. I swear, you you said a good fucking um, comment in that. You said, this guy is one of the most underrated footballers in the league. Yeah, easy. Yeah. In the year, bruv, some of the shit, like that one where he was playing for Algeria and he come across and he used his right foot and flicked it past flicked the guy. It past him. 
That was re that was recently. That was that was a couple of months back. Yeah, and then he's just there sitting people go. down, bruv. He is fucking such a good foot. I watched your Fabregas one earlier as well. Yeah. Again, baller. 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 The thing is with Riyad Mahrez, yeah, because he's he's a creative pass first wide player in the era of stat padding wide fucking forwards, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he don't, brother, he just don't get respected, bro. Do you know what I mean? There'll be men that will say that Sterling's better than him because Sterling scores more goals. Do you know what I mean? Or they'll say Mane and Salah and these men are better than him because he scores more goals. And that's just what it is, bro. Like, these men quantify footballers now purely based on numbers yep. instead of watching them. So you'll see people, like, when they're talking about the best players in the league, Mahrez is never in the conversation. It's always yeah, the Rashfords, yeah. the Sterlings. Do you know what I mean? The Marnies, the Salas, because of the numbers, bro. That's just all it is. But when you watch Sterling, yeah, you can see that, bruv, like, man's not even Man City level. Like, it's crazy. Like, when I see him in that team, like, he looks so far behind. Bruv, he's not even better than Foden, bro. Oh, mate, Foden's light years clear of that boy. And bruv, Foden's Sterling, a kid in comparison. Bruv, Sterling, Sterling technically is not fucking good at all. <laughs> like, literally. T technically, like, man's barely Prem standard. Like, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, th that's and just how it is. Quick. And because he scores goals, yeah, but people don't realize like it's like the same with Trent, yeah. Trent will whip him 40 crosses, get one assist, everyone jizzes, yeah. Sterling mm. has six shots to score a fucking goal. Mm. Yeah. So when he scores two in one game, it's like, oh my god, Sterling's great. Well, no, he had fucking 10 shots, you prat. You know <laughs> <laughs> like he averages, I think, three times more touches in the box than any Man United player, and you wonder why he scores goals. <laughs> That's like, you know, it's just like it's not really rocket science, isn't it? It's a numbers game. Yeah, put the ball no. in the box enough times. And that's what I say goals. about the modern it's game, bro. Like it's been, it's been over, it's been overtaken by like physicality, athletes, and pace merchants, bro. Do you know what I mean? This club's, this actual league's riddled with them kind of players. That's why when people yeah. want to make fun of other leagues and that, but the actual technical level of other leagues are way better. Way better than the Premier League. Way better. That's why you get players like Basuma and that come to the Premier League, piss it. And now people are talking about shelling big money on Basuma, bro. But all these guys, yeah, that everyone's rating in the Prem are coming from these so-called farmers' leagues, bro. Yeah. Yeah, it's true, bro. They, they, this is the fucking farmers' league, bro. Man City have won 100%. that league up four fucking years straight. They're going to win the title <laughs> by a canter. <laughs> yeah, go and have a look at the French league. That's a competitive league again since Potter's turned up, bro. It's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. Like, it's crazy. Yeah? Look at the Spanish league. It's competitive. Like, that, competitive. Yeah, and the Italian league was competitive at one point. In our AC and Juve were swapping, swapping yeah. positions like week in week out. The Prem City have been at the top for a minute. United flattered to deceive weren't never going to do nothing, and after that, City have been top the whole time. Bro, I'm just looking at the Italian league. Fucking hell, I didn't realise how high up Atalanta were. Fucking hell. Yeah, second. bro, they're good. They're good, bro. Bro, mate, rah. Juve, fucking hell. What has happened to Juve, man? Like, mate, they... A they, bill they, happened to Juve, blood. <laughs> <laughs> now, I mean, and, and Cristiano happened to Juve before that. You know the ones bro, there, bro. Man got, rid, got rid of Sarri, you know, to make Ronaldo happy. And now they're done out here, bro. Bro, imagine repping Ronaldo, yeah, if he's in Europa League next season. Yeah, he, I reckon <laughs> he's gone at the end of the season. There's no way he's playing Europa next year. You sure? You think he'll go, yeah? Bro, I don't think he's ever played Europa in his career. Like, Ronaldo's, he, he can't, Ronaldo he can't play UA for Europa, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Ronaldo's going to leave, imagine? man. <laughs> bro, match day one, yeah? Juventus up against Dundalk. <laughs> Ronaldo's breaking records with their fucking one game, bro. 19 goals, five assists. Like, mm -hmm. mate, I, I can't believe how low down they are. I genuinely can't. I don't look at that league. I, like, I watch highlights if they come up on YouTube and stuff like that. But I don't actively go and search and watch all of them leagues. Mm. Yeah. I can't believe they are fourth in the table. And if Napoli win their game in hand, Napoli have actually already won more games than them this season. <laughs> yeah. And they've got a game in hand. That's actually shocking. They've drawn nine games this season, Juve. Fucking you know. yeah. hell. Really, like, look at Inter, bruv. Two losses all season. Don Conte. Don Conte. They drew at the weekend. He's another so. manager that slept on heavily. His actual his class, record, man. His record is a joke. And you know what I mean? And where he where he picks teams up and where he drops them off is a joke, bruv. 
I mean, yeah. he's very good. Mate, he's very do, good. Do you know what's funny though? It's like I see a tweet. I see a tweet the other day, like a massive account, like millions of like one of these blue tick accounts put out, like Lad Bible or something, yeah. And they said Conte took over Juve when they were seventh, won them the title first season. He took over Chelsea when they were tenth, won them the title first season. Took over Inter in the first season, he got them second, two points off, and got them to Europa League final and lost to Sevilla. This season, bosh, eleven points clear, yeah. And then all of the comments on that fucking tweet were saying, "Yeah, but he's done fuck all in the Champions League." Like, who gives a shit? Yeah, that's all. Like, that's all. That, that's literally all people. That's the stick that they use people to. The, the stick they used to beat people. You gotta understand, yeah. The Champions League. You, it's literally the whole of Europe you're competing against, bro. And you can only play the cards you've been dealt in it. Like, what you do in yeah. that league. Like, it means something. It literally yeah, let's means. Not, let's not forget as well, yeah. This is the same Conte who got some dead Italian team to a fucking final, bruv. Yeah, mm. and they got done in the final, but he still got them there. Like fucking dead Italian team. I can't. Even, I think it was. I can't even remember what fucking year it was. Yeah, he took some fucking pensioners on that trip, bruv. Yeah, and they got all the way to the final. The chat, I know what year it was. I can't remember what type, what year it was. He's a fucking good manager, man. Really good manager. He's somebody I'd take in a heartbeat. Like. But he falls out with people. Mm. He falls out with owners and shit. That's why, like, when you ever put, like, when you see people give their list of managers they'd like, Conte is very rarely in that list. Hundred percent, bro. And to answer this dickhead in the chat as well, yeah, <laughs> you can't compare Pep Guardiola yeah to Conte, bro. Pep Guardiola goes into the teams yeah that are number one in the country yeah already, coming off the back of winning trophies already. And wins more trophies with them. That's not the same as Conte, bro. What what team did Pep take over that were tenth in the league and he won them the league? So shut up. You know them ones there. You know when my when man wanna chat shit, bro. At the end of the day, yeah, Pep Guardiola is a different um a different animal altogether, bro. Uh, for me, he's probably the best manager coach in the history of the game, bro. In terms of what he's done in it, but I always say. There'll always be an asterisk beside his name, yeah, if he doesn't win another Champions League with a team that's not Barcelona and doesn't have Lionel Messi in it. Because 100%, yeah, he's never that done same it. Barcelona never team, yeah, that won the Champs League, yeah, is also the same Spanish players, yeah. Literally, the core of that Spanish, them Spanish players won the World Cup and the Euros. It was their golden generation. So yeah. you could just put that down to circumstance. You could just put it down to, oh, you were fortunate enough to manage the best players in the world. Oh, time, that's it. Yes, the fucking Busquets, Fabregas, fucking Torres, fucking the players they had, bro. Bro, but that's it what I'm saying. Players. And if and if nine of Puyol. them, yeah, Ramos. If, if nine <laughs> of them are in your team, yeah, or eight of them are in your team, <laughs> and you won the Champions League, bro, it's not really a fucking surprise, is it? To mm. be honest, do you know what I mean? And that's not taking away exactly, no. but that's not taking anything away from Pep. But I'm saying the guy went to a Bayern Munich, yeah. That literally won under um Yep Yankers. I think they won like a, a quadruple or something like that. And then he went there and couldn't win a Champions League with a team that had already just won it. Just won like, it. Like yeah. what are you what yeah. are you talking about? It's not the same as Conte coming into a team that's tenth in the league. Yeah, you know I'm saying can, so that you, so that moron can, can shut up. How can you take how can you take a team from seventh, yeah, and win them the title? A few years later, you take a team from tenth. Yes, they had good players, but they weren't that fucking good, though, were they? Because they finished tenth, mm. yeah. And you get them the title. They own, and then you take Inter Milan. And when people say, "Oh yeah, but we we can't go out and get forty in the our fucking Inter final," had twenty seven players that had joined that summer. Yeah, yeah. both of them teams. One had signed fourteen. One had signed thirteen. Yeah, it was a complete overhaul. So when people say about process, yeah, he done it in one fucking summer window. And didn't spend that much money. You know what I'm saying? Sevilla done it and won the fucking cup. They didn't spend much money. They overhauled their team because they on, always want to progress. And this is what pisses me off with football fans. They have been conditioned into thinking longevity is key. No, win the fucking title or bounce. <laughs> yeah, that's it, innit? Right. The longevity <laughs> will take care of itself if you work on the short term. Do you know what I'm saying? Everyone's yeah. talking about fucking longevity, bro. Do you know what I mean? Longevity comes with consistently doing the right things short term. Do you yeah. know what I'm saying? That's what it is, bro. There's a system. Do you know what I mean? Before you do a 10K, you need to take two steps, four steps, do 1K, 2K, and then you get to 10. 
You don't just fucking do 10. <laughs> do, you know, do you know what I'm saying? No, that's like, that's not how it is. Bro, you don't just go from oh, sitting still. Oh, yeah, I just did 10K. And what happened on oh, the bro, way to that 10K? Yesterday, I've gone from sitting still for a year to nine miles walking around the fucking golf course. No wonder I'm in bits, bro. <laughs> bro but do you know what I mean? These guys are fucking morons, mate. Do you know what I mean? They're not talking about, oh, we're thinking about the long term of the, few, long term of the club. If you <laughs> always think about the short term of the club, the long term sorted. 100%. Do you know what I'm saying? The long term is sorted. Do you know what I'm saying? Good habits, yeah, constantly over a short period spanning is how you look after the long term. Mm -hmm. That's how you look after the long term. Yeah, because when you when you start thinking about the long term too much, you forget about the fucking short term. And that's why loads of people are like, oh, you know what? I've got a fucking holiday in eight months. So, yeah, like I've got eight months to get in shape. And then they wait until there's two months to go. And then they say, all right, shit, I need to get serious now. <laughs> <laughs> no mate you know I mean? if you've got eight months to get in shape better you fucking start now do little by little yeah and then you'll be cool bruv you don't wait six months to fucking start you know what i mean and that's what united are doing with ollie bruv you're gonna wait six months to fucking get in shape bruv it's some joke thing bro like we wasted yeah. three years with the clown uh, big, big up to michael 87 lee my mum just said bloody hell that lee's always on the beer <laughs> 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 big up your mum, Michael. Big up your mum. Yeah. Hey, listen, I only have a few bottles here and there, but people think I'm just constantly drinking Stella all day and night. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but the thing is, right. bruv, even, bruv, even if man had one or two bottles a day of beer, yeah, that's probably still less than what man drink on a Saturday. Yeah, exactly. Because bruv, how many, I mean, what, what's in I a mean, bottle? Like, how, many bottles are, how many bottles are in a pint? Um, I think one and a half bottles is a pint. Well, there you go. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So even if man had like two bottles a day, yeah, that's that what that's one and a half pints. I've seen geezer sit there and slam ten pints on a Saturday, easy. Yeah, man, bro, I did seven pints in the pub on Friday night. No drama. You see bro. what? You see oh, what I mean? That's <laughs> <laughs> said no yeah. drama. Do you see what I mean? Hey, bro, yeah. I used to be it's a lightweight. Light, yeah, I swear, I used to be a lightweight. The last three years, bro, I can I can neck pints now, bro. Yeah, and then I came back here, yeah, and um, I came back. I can't remember who was playing. There was a football match on. I think I streamed afterwards and I had a couple of beers and went to bed. Like a couple yeah. of bottles. So I've done what eight pints, yeah, on a Friday night. During yeah. the week, yeah, like people just see me on camera for like an hour, yeah. And they see me do three or four. Yeah, so that's what two pints. Yeah. Two pints. That's it. And then later Easily on, I might, do, I might do another one. Whoopee. Like I it's not like, like people think I like, big up to Michael. I know you I know you're not on a I know you're not on a nasty one either, neither is your mum, yeah. But um but yeah, people think I've just got like this fucking backpack on, bruv, yeah, with a barrel on my back and I just got, <laughs> and tube, got the yeah. straw in it, bruv, like <laughs> water boy blood. I'm telling you. <laughs> uh, do, do like you know Bobby what? Boucher, the, blood. Yeah, bruv, when the sun's out and I was sat in the garden earlier, man. Yeah, just a couple of beers, bruv. Like just chill. It's nice, man. Feet up, relax. Mm. Yeah. Like, I ain't looking to do a madness, bruv. I'm in the comforts of my own... Well, it's not my own home. It's the, it's the wifey's parents' home. But mm. I'm in the comforts of their home. Yeah, man, I'm not doing anyone any harm. I'm probably doing myself harm by drinking. But it is what it is, isn't it? It's my body. 100%. And this guy here, your new tide, he said people don't want to set goals because they don't want to set conditions for failure. Exactly. That's what it is, bro. And that's what I say. With Manchester United, all these men are talk, book, talking about improvements. What improvements? This is the longest yeah. a manager's gone at Manchester United without winning a trophy per, per so, um, post Sir Alex Ferguson. It's the most money we've spent and it's the shittest football we've ever played. So <laughs> where's true. the fucking... Like, bro, and so, so where's the improvement? Like, if, yeah. you sort, if you sort out your short-term goals, your long-term goals will take care of itself, bro. Short-term, the football's fucking diabolical. Why is that? Why have we why have we scored and conceded like like almost the most amount of goals in the Premier League, bruv? And hundred goals for and against, bruv. Mate, I, I a see a stat, the, bruv, I see a stat the other day, yeah. That when when um, um Unai Emery got sacked, you was one point behind us, I think, or two points behind us. You then ended up finishing about 10 or 12 points behind us, and now we're about fucking 20 points behind you. <laughs> like, like that's how far we have dropped, yeah. Because we're looking to 10 years down the road or five years down the road. No, it's about fucking now. Yeah, and the madness is, no matter how shit we have both been this season, I do think one of us is going to shit house that fucking Europa League, bruv. I really do. <laughs> and it, no, give it... Listen, yeah, bruv, watch Villarreal just fucking win it, bruv, and then man are done at it. 
Oh, bruv, can you imagine if Unai Emery fucking won it? With imagine if Emery bruv. turns Eula over and then us, bruv. Oh, my days. That's Mate, assuming we get to the final because man don't like to make no assumptions with this football team. Could you actually imagine if Villarreal, Villarreal got no right to even be in the semi-final with the state of that fucking team, mate? Their yeah. team is fucking shit. And when I say shit, if you put that Villarreal team in the Premier League, yeah, I'd say that I'd finish lucky at best with that manager. I'd say lucky to finish around Burnley and Brighton and them lot. Mm. Yeah, maybe there or thereabouts. Yeah, because they are dog shit. He's a good manager, though, man. Like, I, I think, like, when I knew that he was Arteta getting the job, I was like, can we bring Emery back? Like, <laughs> yeah, like, just bring him back, bro. Just bring him back. And when you see him getting them to the semi, bro, I'm actually kind of bricking it for Thursday because Noah Bamiang, as far as I know, although he is back in training, I think, so I don't know whether he's going to be fit enough because he had malaria in it. And that fucking, I know somebody that's had that, bro. That takes it out of you for months, like mm. properly. He's lost loads of weight as well, man. I, I know he's tall and skinny like me, but fucking, he has lost weight. <laughs> yeah. uh, bro, I'm the white Abamyang. Yeah, do you know what I mean? But I think Lacazette's going to miss. I don't think Balogun going to play. So we'll probably have Eddie and Ketty up front. Like, come on, man. Eddie and Ketty oh. up against that lot. Like, bro, it's going to be fucked. But. Anyway, listen, this show's been lit, man. Aaron bruh, 10 minutes. Always, ago, man. Bruh. Man already know. Yeah, come on. We're both funny as well, bruv. Like, everyone's hooked. It's <laughs> like... just banter, bro. Like, that, bruv, it's vibes, innit? That's what it is, bro. Like, that, 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 <laughs> yeah, that's all right. it is, is vibes. Always, man. Like, I'm... That's what it's all about, bruv, to be completely honest. Well, that's all we have got, because we can't fucking celebrate anything else, mate. We're fucking both shit. <laughs> Trash me. No, absolutely, <laughs> bruv. Absolutely. Yeah, look at this, yeah? Look at this. Look at this last comment. We'll end on this, yeah? Villarreal played Barcelona off the park even with 10 men at the weekend. Yeah? See, bro, see you just never know, bruv. They lost 2-1 Villarreal, yeah? But they fucking... Yeah. I didn't watch it. They played them off the park. There you go. Bruv, we're finished. We are not and, bruv, I heard that Roma played well in their last game as well, bruv. Like, honestly, it's like teams want to pick up form as soon as they come to fucking play us, isn't it? <laughs> I already know, bruv. And judging by that Leeds game, if that United that played against Leeds turn up this week, they're getting beat, bruv. Mm, and, and I think the first leg's at home as well. And I, I always prefer the away leg um, first. Yeah, yeah. I, I prefer... We've got the away leg first, so I'm kind of cool with that. But but yeah, man. What you got? What else you got coming tonight, man? You got I'm any, sure um... with James is at eight today. He's back in the boxing gym. The gyms have opened back, so he's boxing tonight at five. He's well into that boxing, isn't he? He's getting fucking yeah. lively, bruv. Yeah, bruv, he needs to do it, man. It's good. It's a good. It's good to have in a locker, bruv. You know what I mean? It's good to have in a locker, man. So yeah, he's boxing tonight. So our show's gonna be at eight p.m. today. Um, yeah, and, and that's it. So I'm about to just chill now, bruv. Until then, really, man. Yeah, yeah, I yeah can, start I, sorting yeah, out I, some rants, reacts. I'm gonna start filming them for this week, bruv. Yeah. I was watching a video today of Iniesta, bro. Oh my. Oh, God. it's disgusting, isn't it? Disgusting, bruv. Oh, the guy's bro. too good. <laughs> I was literally watching it. Before before we started filming, he might he might just be the best midfielder ever, bro. Like in terms of like all round, like he's fucking fake, bro. Like he Mate, might that's... just he might just be he might just be the best ever, bro. Like in but terms that's the thing, of me like... and you look at football footballers differently, yeah. Because like yeah. when when you were saying about Fabregas and look, he's already took the look off the first touch because he knows where the ball is. So you know because his touch mm. is so sick, mm. he can touch the ball. And then he's looking and scanning the area, bruv. Mm. I used to love Fabregas because of that, bruv. The guy's always got time. You never see the guy getting pushed back. Never, bro. Yeah. And that's what, but that also helps when you play on a good pitch, bro. Fabregas here yeah, will literally, the ball's on his way to him and he's, his head's up here because he knows what the ball, he just touches the ball and he's just put it somewhere. Like, do you know what I mean? It's mad, yeah. bro. Like someone will miscontrol it and Fabregas is looking around like he's already in control of the ball and he's not even got it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because he just, he just, bruv, his brain just literally just cues That's everything up perfectly. He played for us because before the ball comes to him, he's, he's over his shit, always over. Yeah, he knows already. Mirrors, I've got wing mirrors on. He's just fucking chilling, bro. Yeah, and I used to love Fabregas. Our fans mm. put him down because he went to Chelsea, innit? Yeah, mm. for me, he's still Yeah, but you lot didn't want him back, bro, because he said he wanted to come back to Arsenal first and Arsenal said they didn't want him at the time. I remember, I remember clearly. He said you he wanted to come back was? to Arsenal and they said they didn't want him because you meant to get someone else, innit? Yeah, do you know why we didn't want him? Why? Because it would have ruined Mesut Ozil's career, bro. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, yeah. He would have helped yeah. Ozil, though. That's the thing, isn't it, bro? If, if they'd been in the same team together, I would have maybe seen a better Mesut Ozil at Arsenal, innit? But mm -hmm. he's fucking brilliant, man. Fabregas is one of the best footballers I've seen from my club. 
Mm. Like he's definitely he's definitely in that top ten. I'd, I'd put Fabregas in top ten for Arsenal players. He is fucking class, mate. Yeah, Absolutely yeah. brilliant footballer. Yeah, and like some of the passes, like the, on that compilation thing you put out, the the reacts here, mm. bro. If Granite Xhaka needs to study Cesc Fabregas, yeah, because if he wants to start spraying sixty five yard diags, bro, yeah. My man's doing them like it's a sand wedge and they're back spinning and fucking like instant stops and all that one. Every time I, I see you with the goalkeeper, the goalkeeper come running out, bro. Yeah. And he was like, yeah, I can get that. And it was like, oh, I can't get that. <laughs> bro, he's just a joke. One of the best players we've seen in this league, man. And he gets no, mad. No, absolutely, bro. And football's mad because like, even my man saying Zidane and Iniesta, yeah, or Zidane or Iniesta, bro. Zidane and Iniesta, when I say midfield players, yeah. Iniesta was like a box to box midfielder, bro. Yeah, like Zidane he was, was more left forward. Zidane really. was a 10, bro. Yeah. Like Zidane was an attacking midfielder. He's like, like a Grealish type, go over to the exa left. Exactly. That, Zidane used to float and that. Zidane wasn't mm. picking up the ball on the edge of his box off the centre backs. Iniesta was literally picking up the ball off the keeper at times. Like he was everywhere on the pitch. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, and that's what I mean about them kind of midfielders, yeah. Like out of that kind of midfielder that can start attacks and finish them. Iniesta's different, bro. Like, he's different. He's dribbling. He dribbled like a winger. He passed. He was a proper passer. Do you know what I'm saying? He tackled. He, bro, he did everything. His first touch was a fucking joke. Like, everything was just crazy. And he wasn't quick, but because he was short, he had a good little change of pace and that. Like, when you see the thing, the guy's unreal, man. You know what I mean? And the problem is with yeah. good players, sometimes because they're playing around good players, you almost take them for granted, innit? Like, with Grealish... Grealish is sick, but because he's the best player in his team by far, you can see how good he is every time he plays, isn't it? Whereas yeah. someone like a Bernardo Silva, because he's playing with Mares, because he's playing with um, Gundogan, because he's playing with De Bruyne, you don't actually appreciate how good he is. Good yeah, that's true. You know what I mean? Because they're playing with loads of good players. So sometimes yeah. that could work against players when you're watching them. Yeah, man. No, that's facts, man. That's facts. Listen, I can smell my chicken fajitas being cooked as I speak, bro. Come on. Yeah. Yeah, big up the wifey, yeah, looking after me, man. I'm fucking starving. Yeah, literally. But yeah, man, Hammers at 8 p.m. on Rance's channel. Make sure you go and check that out. Make sure you're subscribed to his channel right now if you haven't already. And um, I'll be back again. Funny enough, at 8 as well. We're Turkish. Um, Come on, people. Tried to pull it forward because Leicester are playing. But mm. we can't pull it forward as it stands. So, so uh, yeah, man. And uh, whoever finishes first, I'll just palm them over to you if I finish before you, bruv. Quite so, uh, yeah, man, big up the chat room. Big up to everyone live and direct. Smack a like on the video. And uh, I'm out of here. Later.